Uh, day summary, we're now um, three presentations. Again, if you can um, make connections for peace between the keynote speakers and what you're about to hear over the next um, hour or so, um, that'd be a wonderful way to engage. The first um, of three speakers I met for the first time yesterday. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting online. Uh, this is Keiko Ogura. Um, Keiko-san um, taught me a few things about how to use Zoom, actually. Thank you so much for that. Um, and she said, um, Mike, what, you know, um, what, what, what should I do? What would you like me to present? Because um, I was there on the, that day. I said, it's simple. Tell your story of being there on that day. Thank you so much for sharing your precious time for me. I'm so excited to be invited to join because my English, I started from 42 years old and then my English is made in Hiroshima English. <laughs> you may find out many mistakes, but it's okay, I feel. Okay, and uh, today I want to share my experience with you uh, in 1945, when I was eight years old in Hiroshima, what happened around 6th of August. This is two months after the bombing in Hiroshima. And uh, this was made, this film were made uh, by American soldiers. That means, please understand, those American soldiers must be contaminated with the radiation, I'm afraid. Uh, this is uh, given from America and four different uh, directions pictures. And the former uh, director put it together and made this film. Now we are facing at the south and the white area is the sea, Hiroshima Bay. and. Uh, until the seashore, you see everything was destroyed and the camera is moving to east area. You will see some buildings still left, but all of them were like the skeletons. And uh, this was the business district, the business area. So. Behind these buildings, there was the city center, downtown area. Those buildings were banks, insurance companies, and the major companies' offices. See the chimney here. This direction, behind the chimney, there is Hiroshima Railroad Station. In front of the station, you will see the hill like this. Hijiya, uh, the Futawayama Hill, we say. I was this, the other side of the hill. So if you see this hill from Hiroshima Station, you can imagine, imagine I was the other side of this hill. This is Hiroshima City, right, uh, showing the red part was completely 100% burnt down area, and the yellow part was completely destroyed. Of course, the white area until the seashore were damaged partially and then burned. You, can you see that this dot, yellow, uh, red one, that is the place where I was when the bomb was dropped. This is the hypocenter, two kilometers, 2.4 kilometers away. This is the Hiroshima station. And then those days there were seven rivers and the being chased the flames, many people jumped into those rivers. And then those rivers were full of dead, dying, and uh, they were floating and uh, to the sea, going down to the sea. And uh, many people fled, you know, uh, the, to the nor north area. And uh, many came to my area too. This is the area where 
the uh, radiation contaminated the rain fell. This is Hiroshima city. And I was around here. You can see the uh, red spot. There, uh, I have experienced the so-called the black rain, rain with the radiation. This is two kilometers from the hypocenter. Uh, I'm sorry, one kilometer, 1,000 meter. This is the former elementary school I entered. I spent there one year and a half. And those days, uh, there were not many shelters in the town. So my father was worrying about that we might be killed before we reached, all of my family reached to the shelter. So my father decided to leave. And then this is one kilometer. So we left here and a little bit before atomic bombing to two kilometers area. So my uh, classmates who were still this school, many of them died. This is where I moved. This is Mount Futaba. Uh, this hill is in front of Hiroshima uh, Railroad Station. And uh, this is my house. And uh, my house, I don't know whether you can see this shrine gate. I lived near Shinto Shrine. And uh, this is my elementary school I moved. And uh, there was a park near my house, between school and my house, where my father cremated the victims. Every day after the bombing, he cremated hundreds of people, uh, the victims. So the smell reached to my house. We were so scared. The father said, don't come to the park because there were hundreds of uh, the body is tired in the park. And then my school, I was going every day and then with the uh, anti arid food put on, as soon as we heard the siren, I was running away and crying because I might be shot from the airplane, small airplane. I was afraid. And those days, uh, time to time, uh, uh, you know, there was gun shooting from an airplane, not only atomic bombing, but the, such kind of gun shooting from an airplane. So I was so scared because one day, and my part of my house started to burn because of this gun shooting. So I was so scared. This is the day, let me tell you about that day. I was on the road. In the morning, my father said, Keiko, you shouldn't go to school today because today I feel something might happen. Because previous night, around the midnight, there was all of a sudden a uh, silent, you know, arid warning. Several times until the morning, there were arid warning. So father said something might happen. I was alone on the road, and then all of a sudden, 8 to 15, there was a tremendous uh, bright flash. Everything turned to white. I couldn't see any color. And then I was beating on the road. And then for a while, I was unconscious. I opened my eyes. Then in front of me, only I saw a barn with a straw roof was burning and everywhere was just dark, no sound. I couldn't understand. Around me, surrounding me, there were, uh, you know, branches and the framework broken, uh, furniture, so they were scattered. The first sound I heard was my little brother's cry. So I could see, oh, my house might be this way, you see. And then the reason why this uh, barn was burning is uh, the original flash 
flame of thing started to burn like a straw roof, you see. It's far away, two kilometers from the hypocenter grand zero. So people in the city instantly, their clothes started to burn. So many people were fleeing, fleeing with burning clothes. Then I returned my home. Everything was broken and the ceiling was blown up. And then hundreds of pieces of glass uh, stuck on the wall. And then uh, fortunately, my father was just between those two sliding doors, not behind the glass door. So he was safe. So, and uh, later my uncle reached my home on his back over 20 of the, uh, the pieces of glass stuck and the bleeding battery uh, came to my home. And uh, later uh, I saw many, many people were coming like this. I step out, then I experience what's this? And the uh, charcoal gray color rain started to fall on me. On the other hand, my brother was working in the city those days until eight o'clock, uh, eight years old, those children stay in the at the home, but and over uh, 12, over eight, that means from nine to 12, had to evacuate into the mountain area. But from 13 to 15, those junior high students were working here. This is before and after. You see white area, this, that means uh, those students were breaking houses to make fire breaks, uh, I, you know. I'm sorry. Fire break. You saw white area, citizens and the students die. My brother was on this road, white area, you know, on the sixth, on the fifth, you see here. That was on the fifth, he could survive. On the sixth, on this road, uh, right now, it is called the Peace Boulevard in front of uh, Peace Park. This is Peace Park. 320 uh, children, students, around 13 or 14 died. No one could survive. This is after the bombing, nothing left. This area, everybody died. The, my house was Hiroshima Station. My house was the other side of this hill. Here you see, I lived here. My brother was around here and in the potato field and looking up. And the B-29, the bomber, he could notice. And then he could see the black dot was released, that's atomic bomb. Then he was lucky. Uh, he turned back a second before explosion he was beaten on the ground, the battery, and the unconscious. All the students were beaten and the unconscious. And when they opened their eyes and they found many, many wounded people were coming toward the hillside. And then going to my area too, my brother and uh, climbed up the hill, they saw the city, city was burning and they're going back uh, to my area, other hand, other side. Until my brother came, all of us thought our town, this town was the, uh, you know, the hypocenter, grand zero. But my brother coming back and said, no, 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 this is not the uh, grand zero, uh, the target, target was, center of Hiroshima city. City is completely damaged. We couldn't understand why. My brother said that I saw a single bomb was released. Why? City was destroyed by a single bomb? Yes, my brother said. And he said, many, many wounded people are coming to my area because 
I lived near a Shinto shrine, and then those uh, people were uh, told, and uh, in case something happened, go to the Shinto shrine or Buddhism temple, you will see that those places will be first aid station, and uh, you'll see doctors, people believe in coming to my area, to the shrine. This is the place, the shrine near my house. Many, many people making a line and they came to in front of me and then lie on the ground and uh, lie on the step. And the skin was peeling off. And then uh, I sensed the burnt hair first. And then there was no doctor, only one soldier with a tin bucket with the oil and the apply. That's all. Here, I saw many people were dying, dying every day. Next day, from the hill, I saw Hiroshima City. I was surprised. Nothing left. Nothing left until the seashore. Nothing left. But previous day, what I saw was line of smokes. People were cremating. The big one, uh, this side, that's my father's work. You see, at the, uh, he cremated over 600 victims in the small park. Hiroshima City in 1945, such a place, orphans, A-bomb orphans return. Over 2,000 A-bomb orphans return. Those elementary school kids stayed in the suburbs. But after uh, September, they returned and found something like that. I saw many children, street children, were living in the broken buildings. There was no orphanage, had a hard time. But four years later, we got the budget to rebuild the Hiroshima city. Then. This is four years later. And the next year, five years after the bombing, we chartered, we made from, uh, we made Hiroshima Cup baseball team. And that, that is, that was our dream. Still now we have uh, that baseball team. 12 years later, Hiroshima City was like this. And the museum is over there. Yeah, you see the museum. You see the museum. For the first time, there was the first uh, anti-atomic and uh, hydrogen bomb uh, movement. So many, many people around the world came and they saw what nuclear weapon meant, means. And now, this is uh, the senator we have every year, around 5,000 people passed. And then this is the present number, last August. This year, uh, more names will be added. Not only Japanese, uh, around 10 American soldiers and the Asian people, who is studying in Hiroshima and, and the surface of the chest, uh, the, you know, Senator, it is said, let all the souls here rest in peace for we shall not repeat to the evil. This is Hibakusha, we Hibakusha's pledge. And please understand that every time we see this, we means you and me. That means human beings all of the world should say the same words. We shall not repeat the evil. Thank you so much.
this is the end of my story. I thank you everybody that you share you you share my story. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Keiko. That was a wonderful story and very heartwarming. Thank you for sharing your story with all of us here today. Thank you. And uh, one thing I want you to remember, nuclear weapon is not a, just a huge weapon destroyed uh, so too many uh, buildings and people, but please remember radiation radiation stays in you know uh the, we have been suffering because of radiation and until my birth the last moment of my uh, children's birth i was worrying uh the you know healthy baby or not and mm -hmm. then i recall those days uh you know kind of discrimination we shouldn't tell we were there if I say I was in Hiroshima, we cannot get married. Such kind of worry we have, and still we have, concerning radiation. Yes. Okay, be yeah. understood. Yes, and I, I think that uh, that is one of the reasons why we're here today is to share the effects of war and how important it is for us to remember um, that we're all connected. And so what is happening in one part of the world really affects everybody in the whole world, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So thank you very much um, again. Mm -hmm.